Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017 in downtown San Francisco. About 800 people, developers talking about Node, Node.js, and really the crazy adoption of Node uh, as a development platform, enterprise adoption, everything's up and to the right. Some crazy good stories. And we're excited to have somebody coming right off his keynote. It's James Bellinger. Uh, he is a engineer at Twitter. James, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you just got off stage and you were talking all about Twitter Lite. What is Twitter Lite? I like Twitter as it is. Uh, well, so Twitter Lite uh, is a optimized, it's, it's a mobile web app. Uh, so if you pull up your phone, open up the web browser, and go to twitter.com uh, in your smartphone web browser, you get a Twitter experience that we're calling Twitter Lite. Okay. And it used to be uh, a little bit out of date. Uh, but we've uh, been able to update it using a lot of new, exciting web technologies. Um, and so now we have this thing that feels very much like a native web app. Okay. Uh, they call them progressive web apps these days. Um, and so we're using that as sort of uh, a way to sort of compete in areas and markets where maybe native apps are less able to compete, uh, where you know, people don't want to download a 200 megabyte um, iOS app. Uh, they want something that fits under 600 kilobytes. Okay, so so you had you had the Twitter Lite app before, mm -hmm. and then this was really a re a uh, redeployment, or I think, uh, am I getting well, it wrong? Well, we had we had a web app at mobile.twitter.com, okay. and uh, it was just sort of the mobile web app. Okay, um, but you know we sort of uh, really rewrote everything, and that includes the back end on Node. Uh, and then we're now sort of pushing that and calling it Twitter Lite. Okay, and then uh, and when did that go live or GA? Uh, three or? months ago. Three months ago, yeah. okay, super. So, obviously you're here at Node, you just spoke at Node. <laughs> you know, how was the experience using uh, the Node toolset versus whatever you had to build on before? Uh, it's definitely faster in every way. Uh, well, faster I mean, in sorry. every way. That's so, a good, well, that's a good uh, thing. Well, let me let me catch <laughs> that. Uh, be more specific. Uh, it's those it benchmarking is, people. We need them back over here. <laughs> it is uh, it is very fast for uh, how we apply it. Uh, it's really fast for development speed, um, and perhaps the biggest win is that uh, on both sort of areas of our stack, whether it's uh, the part of the application that runs in the browser, or it's the part of the application that runs inside the Twitter data center, uh, we have one language and technology. So when a problem comes up and an engineer needs to like go and find the problem and fix it, um, they don't need to sort of, oh, well that's server code, I don't know how it works, and it's written in this language I don't understand. Uh, we really just have one application and it happens to run in both places. And so it really improves engineering efficiency. And you saw that in the development process, QA and the yeah. ongoing, yeah. And it was it more, uh, so it's more like the guys that were more fronted that now have access to the back end than the other way around, is that correct? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Um, you know, I think before, uh, I think there's people that they really like Scala and they only want to work in Scala, uh, or there's people that really don't like it. Uh, so you end up, I think, having engineers kind of get balkanized uh, by their technology choices and their kind of preferred systems. Um, but I think it, it really sort of you know, tears down a couple walls. Um, and so it, it, makes, it improves engineering efficiency that way, but we found also that um, some of the tool sets and the, the tool chains that we're using allow engineers to just sort of like move faster. Right. Um, so you know, whether that's like recompiling the service in like one second, um, instead of having to wait for you know, multiple minutes, uh, there's just sort of less time uh, spent waiting. Right. And in terms of don't share anything you're not supposed to share, but in mm -hmm. terms of you know uh, frequency of releases and mm -hmm. and kind of ongoing maintenance and, and kind of the development of the of the uh, I want to say the app, not the app. Mm -hmm. I guess it is the app. <laughs> Going forward, yeah. you know, how has that been impacted by moving this platform? Um, I think uh, it might be too early to say. Okay. Uh, we've you know right now we've got about 12 to 15 engineers and we're ramping up uh, and it. I think it might, we're kind of looking to finish around 25 engineers uh, by the end of the year. Okay. Um, so the, the sort of team and contributor base of the kind of like core team that are working in the app uh, is growing. Um, uh, but you know, otherwise there's, you know, we're releasing every day, we're, you know, we try to, you know, we're kind of always pushing code, we're running experiments uh, a lot. Right. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. But. So it, it sounds like it's a, it's a little easier, but yeah. you're still doing everything you were doing before, but now it just yeah. feels like it, it's easier. We'll, uh, that. we'll you know, talk to me in a couple months and okay. maybe we'll have some better answers okay. for you. Okay, yeah. so the other thing, if I talk to you in a couple months, I talk to you from a year from now, just in terms of as, as you look down the road, mm -hmm. you know, what this opens up, um, you know, kind of what are some of your priorities now that you, you've got it out? You said you've been been out there for three months. Mm. What's kind of next on your roadmap, your horizon? Uh, so far, I think we've been really encouraged by the success of um, using the stack for development. 
Uh, so we're looking to kind of double down on that. Okay. Um, so that means uh, looking at um, some of the other Twitter web apps, uh, or sorry, Twitter apps in general, the other ways that people use Twitter, and to sort of look at how they are built and to see, um, because we're using React uh, and because we're using, um, I think, technologies that make it very easy to you know, be responsive and you know, either be, have a wide layout or a very narrow layout or you know, work offline, um, we have a lot of potential to sort of cannibalize uh, or replace and, and also update uh, some of the existing apps uh, right. that maybe don't get the attention that uh, they need. Right. So there's some of that. Um, and then I think Twitter Lite as a product, um, I think that we're going, you know, we're looking to really expand its reach uh, and make a big push uh, in some of the developing areas. Yeah, because the other thing people don't know, I mean, Twitter's acquired a bunch of companies uh, you know, over the years. So we've heard some examples earlier today where you know, that's a use case when you do have the opportunity to maybe redo an acquired application, you mm. know, that those are kind of natural opportunities to look to redo them this, with this method. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, James, thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, congratulations you. on the talk, and uh, I'll think of you next time I go to Twitter <laughs> Live. Great. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. All righty. He's James Bellinger from Twitter. I'm Jeff Rick. You're watching theCUBE from Node Summit 2017. Thanks for watching.